this is a very much a joint initiative, and we are extremely excited to welcome His Excellency Mustafa Kamal, the Mayor of Karachi. Uh, I'm Rory Stewart, speaking on behalf of the CAR Center for Human Rights Policy, which is co-hosting the event. Many of you in this room, who I know, have engaged in other events. We see this interaction as central, and we're particularly excited to have the Mayor of Karachi because he's somebody who does things. Many, many of our events, particularly our Afghan events, have focused on policymakers looking from a 10,000 foot angle and recycling the jargon of Washington. But here we have somebody who actually gets something done in a very impressive way and can talk in concrete terms about some of the challenges and successes on the ground of Karachi. So, on behalf of the Car Center for Human Rights Policy, very, very much welcome to His Excellency Mustafa Kamal, and I'm going to hand it on. I represent the Harvard Pakistan student group. Thank you so much for coming. You can do me just one favor. We're going to pass around a sheet. Just put up your email address on there. We're hosting several events next week, something on Kashmir, again with the Car Center. We'd love to see you there. Thank you so much to our, our guests, uh, our moderators, Ziad Heather. Um, I'll start the event because we've waited way too long. <laughs> Hey, good evening and welcome everybody. My name is Ziad Heather. I am a graduate student here at the Harvard Kennedy School. I'm also a joint degree student with Georgetown Law. And a bit about me is that prior to coming to the Kennedy School, I was working in the United States Senate as a foreign policy advisor to Senator Chris Dodd, in which capacity I worked quite extensively on South Asia. It's a real honor to be able to moderate this event and to be able to introduce our speaker and our guest today, Mayor Mustafa Kamal. Mayor Kamal is the mayor of no ordinary city. It is the city of Karachi in Pakistan, which is, first of all, the most populous city in Pakistan at around 18 million. It is the financial center, the financial hub of Pakistan. It is a city that also has a long history of political, ethnic, sectarian violence. It also happens to be a city that's increasingly in the news in terms of US and Pakistani concerns as well about the Taliban. And at a personal level, it's a city where I grew up, so I think about it fondly, and it's a pleasure to have him here to be able to, to help us understand just how he's doing the difficult, difficult job that he is doing. And in that spirit, he has been recognized both at home and overseas for his work. Uh, most recently, the Foreign Policy Magazine, which many of you know, has ranked him as one of the top mayors globally. And so what we hope to understand in the course of this evening is how exactly has he managed to govern a city and what role has he played in Karachi as we see it today with all of its opportunities and all of its challenges. So having said that, let me just very quickly outline to you the agenda for the evening. What we're going to do is we're going to start by a brief, about 20 minutes or so, video, which is going to be, which is a video that the mayor wanted us to screen and share with you. And after that, he will give a, a, a brief opening to just give the context for the video and his experience thus far as mayor. Uh, that will be for about five to ten minutes. At which point, I will have a sort of a very informal conversation with him for about 20 minutes or so. And we'll open it up subsequently to the audience for Q&A. So again, I, the, whole, the goal of this evening is that we hear from a lot of people, at, as Rory said, at sort of the thousand foot level, Washington DC and Islamabad. And here is the opportunity to speak with someone who's on the ground and who can give a much more granular understanding to some of the challenges Pakistan is facing. So without further ado, let's start off with a video and, and begin the program. Thank you. 
that give the world with Karachi. We see a normal growth in the population, an unplanned development which has adversely affected the existing ailing infrastructure, already insufficient to cater to the requirements of the city's population. Moreover, Karachi was always deprived of adequate resources for providing civic facilities to its around 20 million people. The industries of Karachi, supporting the economy of Pakistan, were shifting their expertise and capital abroad due to insufficient and ailing infrastructure of the city. Damage to road network. traffic jams, scarcity of water and long queues of ladies, children and old citizens, sewerage problems, <coughs> water accumulation complaints <coughs> during rain. Shortage of parks and their deteriorated condition. Shortage of playgrounds. Encroachments of roads, playgrounds and shopping centers. Improper sanitation system. Large heaps of garbage. The unavailability of fire tenders. Inadequate facilities and hospitals. neglect in educational institutions. But the scenario of the city started changing by leaps and bounds just after the oath taking of the city Nazim in 2005.
The city district government Karachi has completed about 65% work of the very first Cadet College of Karachi, where classes will be started in just two years' time. This project will cost about 360 million rupees. On metric level, 40 model schools are under construction. 19 boys' schools are costing 325 million rupees, whereas 21 girls' schools are costing 330 million rupees. The construction work is expected to be completed by 15th of April. In rural areas, three projects have been completed in the field of health, whereas work is progressing well on 27 projects. These projects are costing the city government about 540 million rupees. In rural areas, four projects have been completed in the field of road construction, whereas work is progressing well on 23 projects. These projects are costing the city government about 560 million rupees. In rural areas, five projects have been completed in the field of water supply and sewerage schemes, whereas work is progressing well on four projects. These projects are costing the city government about 270 million rupees. Three small dams were constructed at Deh Lal Pukar, Allah Banu, Hawksbay and Mubarak village in the jurisdiction of Kimari town. Two small dams were constructed in Gadab town at the locations of Nala Kur Mandi Amri 1 and 2. And by the grace of God, these dams have been filled with water. These water reservoirs will not only serve the needs of drinking water, but also irrigation requirements of the adjoining areas. In the 18 towns of Karachi, the city district government initiated as many as 208 educational institutions. At elementary, secondary, intermediate and technical levels. A total of 1.2 billion rupees has been spent on these projects. The Hapkaris government has built three of the latest trauma centers at the Abansi Shaman Hospital. The hospital provides state-of-the-art facilities to its patients and has the latest equipment installed in its operation theaters. The hospital now has 28 ventilators installed on its premises and patients can now avail these facilities at a cost of 5 rupees per patient. <coughs> In order to provide better <coughs> treatment, medicines are provided free of cost. The second phase of Karachi Institute of Heart Diseases has been completed and its 120 bed capacity has been increased to 425 beds. For heart patients, successful bypass operations are being carried out. The Hot West City Government completed four additional hospitals for heart patients in Shah Faisal Colony. The Hat Palace government completed first dental clinic and medical college was established. And the Spencer Eye Hospital and the facility has been equipped with the latest instruments. Lenses are being provided to post operation patients and arrangements to import corneas from Sri Lanka have been made so that transplants can be performed. To cater to any emergencies, 12 Mercedes rescue ambulances have been provided. 50 firefighters have been recruited. The latest locals have been made available. The 
latest sweeping machines are being used. A city warden department has been created to handle all kinds of emergencies and normal problems. The city government accelerated the carpeting of 15,500 kilometers of road network. Additional 32 flyovers and underpasses have also been constructed. Corridor <coughs> 1 from Shari Faisal to Zardani Town was completed. This corridor has three underpasses and three flyovers. Was developed in a record time. A second corridor guiding the traffic from Shari Faisal to Surjani Town. Five flyovers and one underpass has also been completed.
900,000 trees have so far been planted on different roads, corridors, and the middle green belts. A first of its kind, a parking plaza RB completed at a cost of 650 million rupees. This has a capacity of parking on 700 cars and 300 motorcycles. Additionally, seven more parking plazas have been completed. <laughs> After the completion of the corridors, 60 pedestrian bridges have been constructed to date. In addition, 100 more bridges are under construction. For the convenience of the citizens, 250 new bus stops have been established in different parts of the city. CMG buses were introduced through a pilot project and there's a plan of deploying a further 400 more CMG buses with the help of the provincial government. For the first time in Pakistan, voice was given to the citizens of Karachi to lodge their complaints. 1339 First ever in the history of Pakistan. Due to the performance and implementation of the system, the district government has been awarded an ISO 9000 certificate. First ever in the history of Pakistan. In order to monitor the traffic on main roads and corridors and to prevent crime, 92 cameras have been installed for the control of the system. In the control room, a wireless security surveillance network connected through WiMAX connectivity is in use. This licensed frequency obtained is used all over the world for public safety. Recently, CPLC has been given access to CDGK Command and Control Center. To 
provide entertainment facilities the Hakbara city government established Bahi Ibn Qasim. beautiful family and model paths in various locations of the city were also established. In addition to the new paths, the city government improved the facilities in the existing paths. The Hakbara City District Government Karachi, with its revolutionary steps, has not only given the people of Karachi a modern lifestyle, but has also returned its industries, the long-awaited development, which has in turn ensured the economic development of the whole country. This turnaround situation has given job opportunities to people hailing from different ethnic backgrounds. Thus, the motto of the entire nation and the Hakbara city government that prosperity of Pakistan lies in the socio-economic development of Karachi has been proved correct. Our house in Pakistan is अच्छा होने के लिए किसी वजीरियाजम किसी सदर किसी वजीरियाला किसी गवर्नर किसी नाजम दाऊ नाजम का इंतजार करें मैंने एमपी का इंतजार करें हम सब खुद भी कुछ करना है पाकिस्तान की डिसीजन मेकिंग जो है वो अपने हाथों में लेनी पड़ेगी इस मुल्क में बहुत कुछ है हम इसको कैपिटलाइज कैसे करें हम उसको यूटिलाइज कैसे करें आम लोगों से क्या निकलेगी आपको पूरे मुल्क में तरक्की होती हुई नजर आएगी हर पाकिस्तानी अगर अपने घर से बाहर की चार दीवारी की सड़क को ओन करने लगे तो पूरा पाकिस्तान ओन हो जाएगा तो लेट्स ओन पाकिस्तान टुगेदर एंड लेट्स बी दी प्रॉस्पर कंट्री एंड प्रॉस्पर नेशन तो कहते हैं कि पाकिस्तान में है क्या पाकिस्तान में तरक्की है
I think two other things that just came to mind was one, your message of self-help is, is a good, is a strong message. Uh, I think there's oftentimes a focus on what the federal government can do and it's useful to hear about what can be done at the citizen level, at the local level. But I think for a lot of the audience who actually, you know, know Pakistan with the prison, dressed up sort of the Taliban and militancy, it's helpful to get a sense of sort of the fundamental issues that the country and cities are wrestling with that are probably no different from issues that any other city wrestles with as well, be it health or development. And I think that's important to keep in mind as well when we think of Pakistan as not an anomalous country. There are serious problems, but then there are problems that are in some ways common to the lots of countries and cities. But having said that, I just want to turn it over to you for about five minutes. So if you want to just kind of lay out for us a bit more, flesh out the, the thoughts of, on the video. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, let me just uh, thank our university and our uh, Pakistan student group and President uh, Maryam Shaktai and the uh, CAR Center for Human Rights uh, for giving me this honor. I'm really delighted to be here. I think it is an uh, honor for me uh, to be here in this, uh, this gathering and present myself, my city and my country. Uh, well, Karachi, uh, I've been responsible for the la last four years uh, as far as municipal services are concerned. Uh, but. Uh, let me tell you that the uh, city is not an ordinary city. It's the backbone for Pakistan's economy. It's a revenue engine for Pakistan. Alone from that city, we generate 68% of the whole country's revenue. And we don't need to self appreciate with this whole nation. Karachi, uh, in Pakistan for the last 62 years, uh, we have two seaports being operational in Pakistan. <coughs> Both the seaports are, are there in Karachi. The third one, which we have recently built there in, in Gawadar in, in Balochistan, but that's not yet operational. Karachi is the gateway to Central Asian country. Karachi is the gateway to Afghanistan. Today, 95% of the food supplies goes from my city. It comes from my city and goes all the way to Afghanistan. So, uh, we are just two hours flight away from the Middle East market. We reach from Karachi to Islamabad, which is the capital of Pakistan, later than we reach from Karachi to Dubai. It's just uh, two hours away from that Middle East market. We are 18 million people and uh, I think the biggest Muslim city in the world and we call that we are the face of Muslim Ummah uh, as a Karachi. Uh, this is what Karachi is all about too. And uh, the last four years so we did not try to develop Karachi just to compete with other cities in Pakistan but we tried to just develop Karachi in, as, a, as a regional uh, business segment and uh, we tried to create more and more infrastructure in order to uh, give them, uh, give the local investor as well as the foreign investor uh, a level playing field, a better and a standard of world standard infrastructure, uh, where where cost of uh, doing business should get low and uh, competitiveness come uh, should come high. We have got human resources, a skill and uh, non skill human resources level uh, as compared to any uh, compared to any uh, where in the world, any any other parts of the world. Return on investment is the uh, is the highest and, and fastest uh, there in Karachi doing their doing, doing business there in Karachi. We offer we offer job to the people from each and every uh, cities and districts of Pakistan you, in in Karachi. Uh, if you want to see the real Pakistan in any one city, all caste, creed, religion, and culture, Karachi is the only city where you can find people from all over the Pakistan from each and every corner there in Karachi. So this is what Karachi is all about. We have got the regional uh, uh, importance, the regional role to play there in, uh, in that part of uh, Pakistan. We have been this stabilizing force there in, 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 in Karachi. And the way uh, the importance of Karachi uh, are, uh, as we, we understand, we, we know, uh, the same way, the same importance and, and opportunities and uh, advantages have become uh, a biggest threat for Karachi and Karachi Arts because the enemy of uh, that part of uh, the world and enemy enemy of uh, uh, humanity, uh, evil forces and, and, and people who want to destabilize Pakistan, they know if uh, if Pakistan were to be destabilized, it can only be destabilized while while destabilizing Karachi, by while you know uh, doing something wrong there in Karachi, and uh, we have seen uh, uh, these sort of uh, incidents there in Karachi. Just in, in six to eight weeks, last six to eight weeks, more than eight groups have been busted 
uh, with the suicide materials, with the suicide jackets, with the, with the explosive materials there in Karachi. So many uh, attacks were prevented uh, there in Karachi. Uh, so many, uh, uh, couple of uh, oil refineries attacks were, were prevented. People were, were arrested and, and, and uh, uh, gangs were busted. So people of uh, Pakistan and the, the people in the region, they understand that uh, all the, even, even the evil forces who want to destabilize Pakistan, they know the Karachi is the backbone for Pakistan's economy and a stabilizing force. So our opportunities and our advantages have become, have brought uh, threats for us as well. Uh, we know that there are reports uh, in different uh, you know, magazines and different uh, 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 media that uh, uh, all the way from Afghanistan till Karachi, Karachi has been used uh, uh, to export uh, 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 and spread drugs and, 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 and uh, from all over the all from uh, from all the way to from Afghanistan till till Karachi, and it has played a conduit role there in order to bring all the drugs from uh, uh, from Afghanistan and to till Karachi and from Karachi till uh, other parts of the world. So uh, this is what uh, the importance and, 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 and challenges of Karachi's uh, are, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, uh, we have been uh, we have been facing it uh, quite firmly, quite uh, aggressively, and uh, we did not try to overlook the uh, problem and try to just close our eyes so that problem will just go away. No, we have confronted confronted uh, the, those problems uh, and uh, we have tried to resolve those issues. And uh, today, uh, and uh, if you want to see the uh, anybody wants to see the success model of governance anywhere in Pakistan, I think the Karachi is the place where you can see the, even in these bad circumstances where we have so many tough lanes everywhere in Pakistan, even in those bad circumstances, you know, uh, despite of all odds, we have developed Karachi, uh, we, as you have seen in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in the movie and uh, uh, this documentary, uh, we, uh, we have been the, uh, Backbone for Pakistan's economy, but uh, this crisis just two years back, uh, till two years back, this uh, mega city had grown till 18 million people, but did not have the first master master plan of uh, of, of Karachi. We made the first master plan uh, after six two years uh, of the independence. Uh, you can well imagine my uh, the kind of uh, uh, job there in Karachi that the city has grown till 18 million people, but had no master plan. Uh, you must have seen the. Uh, the infrastructure, like basic necessities of life, like water and service system. Today, the countries and, uh, and nations are going on to the moon. But even in this this era, you know, we are we the, uh, you know the Pakistanis and the biggest and uh, uh, the economic hub of Pakistan is lack of uh, uh, you know water uh, system and service system, which is the basic uh, necessity of life. So at the same time, uh, we had to do we had to battle with the uh, uh, you know. 60 years and 100 years old problem. At the same time, we have to keep abreast with the latest technology and latest uh, uh, development uh, in de uh, is being developed in, in, in different part of the world. So that was the job, and uh, well, uh, uh, I think people are the best judges. Uh, uh, we try to just uh, uh, you know uh, uh, do the, our, our job uh, honestly and uh, uh, with the full conviction and, and commitment. Uh, this is all I have to say. Uh, uh, I think the time is short, so I'll just uh, end myself here and uh, uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. It's, uh, it's our pleasure and it's helpful to just, that was very useful for us, I think, to just get a sense of you and how you see your challenges beyond, obviously, just the video. The, the, the one issue that comes to mind as we think about this is that obviously a big part of our progress and a big part of these development projects is obviously funds. And funds either tend to come from domestic revenues or they come from some form of foreign direct investment. So in a city like Karachi, which does have all of these sort of security concerns, as a mirror, how do you go about getting investors to think about Karachi as a place to invest? What are the sectors you're pointing them towards? The video alludes to that, but it would be helpful to get a sense of how do you overcome their hesitancy to actually put their funds in a city like Karachi? Well, in today's world, uh, what I believe that, uh, you know, uh, one person's disadvantages are the advantages for others. And uh, uh, since we did not develop for the last 62 years there in Karachi, like uh, Karachi would be a unique city in the world which uh, has grown to 18 million people but uh, does not have, have its uh, own uh, mass system. Uh, we do not have our own water resources. 
but we have got the population of 18 million people. What I try to do as a market, as a, as a salesman of Karachi, uh, that I had I had uh, taken out these issues to different part of the world and try to market it this whole uh, situation and that's where we offer the fastest return on investment for anybody in, uh, from anywhere in the world that for instance uh, instance if somebody is coming if somebody is coming to bring the mass around the system so that company has got 18 million people to uh, as, as a writer as as as, as their customer. Uh, nowhere in the world uh, the return on investment should come uh, that far the way it would have come there in, in, in Karachi. So this is what this is how we we try to uh, you know um, uh, take our issues to different part of the world and whoever whatever countries and cities had done that job and were looking for the new market we offered that new market uh, as a you know in, the, in that part of the world as far as public private partnership is concerned and. Uh, uh, on the other side, on, uh, on the domestic, uh, you know, front, we try to curtail our, uh, you know, leakages which was there in in, in, uh, in the system. And uh, I think never in the history of Pakistan the kind of pace had been uh, set uh, of development. Uh, you would not see uh, that sort of pace. Like uh, I would just give an example. We when we conceived our first signal-free corridors, in that corridors there were 300 passes and three flyovers six projects in a row. There used to be an example, there used to be a system there in Pakistan that one flyover used to take, and in Karachi, one flyover used to take not less than eight years or 10 years or 11 years. We have conceived, constructed, and operationalized six mega projects in a row just in eight months time. And in eight months time, single free core one was conceived and completed in eight months time. And single free then, we conceived the signal free corridor two where we conceived five flyovers, 100, 100 bars and 25 kilometers of the stretch for signal free, then signal free quarter three. What I'm trying to tell you this because if any project, if you take and if you, if, if you complete that project in let's say in five years time, instead of one year time, cost of that project goes high every day and escalations and, 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 and leakages goes high. When you complete those projects in a shorter span of time, you save money and, and you, you, you can build lots of more projects project on the same amount. So our pace was very fast. We worked day, night and morning in pressure and uh, that's how we tried to curtail and, and that, that's how we managed to do this sort of job. So you, you mentioned that one of the assets obviously of a peer to investor would be like this is a huge market, there are 18 yeah. million people. You said that one of the key sectors right now for example is mass transit. What are two other sectors, or if this was an audience of investors, what would you tell them? What are, the, what are two other areas where they should come to Karachi and invest? And how do you tell them, how do you assuage their concerns about issues like bombing, about kidnappings of their workers? How do you kind of deal with that basic element? I mean, at some level, they will say, yes, it's a huge market, but then we have all these concerns. Well, I will start from the last part of your question. <laughs> uh, uh, investors uh, uh, and people uh, who want to earn business, the businessmen, uh, can take any risk if, uh, risk if uh, uh, he or she sees that there is an opportunity for him. People are going to Afghanistan for doing business. People are going to, to Baghdad uh, to explore oil and you know do businesses there as well. People are I mean, all the uh, all uh, all uh, those uh, high tech uh, equipment uh, business are going to uh, Baghdad and Afghanistan and different iron companies you know from America and iron companies from the uh, West uh, who are doing businesses there. Uh, what I uh, believe that uh, wherever you offer uh, in today's world. Uh, you cannot uh, mention even a single place in the world that, that you can call an ideal place. Yes, we do have challenges, uh, like the other parts of the world have the challenges. But in terms of return, the way we, uh, you know, we are offering, the way that, that, that area, the segment, the city, that, that country offers, I think that is phenomenal. And that's what, if you market as well, that's what uh, uh, pays you off, that's what attracts people from different part, part of the world, and that's how they, they come into Pakistan, and especially in Karachi. Uh, as far as uh, uh, in terms of projects are concerned, Karachi, uh, we don't have a uh, <coughs> river passing through my city. So we don't have the clean drinking water. Water comes from 200 uh, kilometers away from the city. Uh, we have the water for today's need, but, but we know uh, two years down the line, we will be having a uh, problem in, as far as uh, clean drinking water is concerned. So that's going to hamper my growth of my industries here, there in Karachi, and as well as, as, well as uh, the uh, drinking water issue. Uh, but we do have sea in front of us. 
So we want to uh, offer that seed uh, to different parts of the world to establish the desalination plant because future water must come from the seed, uh, from the desalination. So that is one of the opportunities for the for people, uh, for the companies who want to come and invest in desalination plants because 18 million people are there to drink that water. So desalination plant is one of the things, mass plant I, I, I have mentioned. We uh, are uh, full of uh, human resources, still and not still. BPU industry is the biggest phenomenon, 200 billion US dollar industry is there. And uh, most of the business are going from this part of the world to India and other, 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 other countries. <coughs> right now we know the market of India has been saturated. And businesses, just because we are not catching those waves which are coming, coming from India, therefore these businesses are going to spread in and South Africa. We have got the most potential human resources youth available in order to uh, get jobs for the uh, for the uh, call centers and, 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 and business process outsourcing. Let me just jump in one thing. On that one, I mean, that, that's very helpful. It was a good deal to get a sense of what are the other areas. But obviously, the video talks a lot about education. That has to be a big priority for any for any year. And it, very commendably, there have been a number of schools that open. There in the, in the West, there's a lot of sort of, um, you know, the, the attention has been captured by this phenomenon of madrasas. And then increasingly, professors at this school, for example, have talked about the idea of it's not just madrasas, it's also public schools. Could you talk to us a bit about, from your perspective, I mean, what is, what is going on inside these madrasas? How can we, how do you as a mayor see the idea of reforming them, or in some ways kind of mainstreaming them so that people who are coming out of there actually have good vocational skills? Well, uh, before commenting on uh, what we are doing there, let me just tell uh, to the people uh, who comment on those madrasas from this part of the world that uh, these madrasas uh, were created to call, uh, to recruit people for the holy war, not today, 20 years down the line, 20 years back, to fight war against Soviet Union. And at that time, those warriors were called the Mujahideens. Mr. Mayor, if I could just agree, I mean, a lot of these madrasas didn't just begin 20 years ago, right? There's no doubt in Pakistan there was a huge expansion of them and the type of education, but madrasas have been part of the subcontinent for a very Well, uh, I think, uh, no, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's been there, but the, the, the kind of number, the number of uh, madrasas which have, uh, uh, which have uh, emerged and the kind of activities, uh, you know, it has emerged, it, it, it wasn't the old phenomena, 100 years back or 50 years back, uh, madrasas weren't doing what they're doing today. And that emerged when there was a war between, uh, you know, uh, Soviet Union and, and, uh, and other parts of the world, like Punjab. These people were recruited. These madrasas were, were uh, formally, uh, you know, uh, formed there in Pakistan, in different parts of Pakistan, to uh, recruit people and brainwash people to go to fight war against Soviet Union there in Afghanistan. So that was the ending and people from this part of the world, they, are, they were part of it, uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. And at that time those people were called the Mujahideen, those people were called the warriors, the, uh, the holy war was going on against the Soviet Union. But definitely, I mean, uh, I will not go into that detail that how they were dumped and nobody looked towards them and now uh, those monsters have become the problem for the, for the world. Today, what we are doing in my city, let me just confine myself within the boundary of city of, city of Karachi. That Karachi, uh, it has uh, 3,500 madrasas there in Karachi. And you would be surprised to know, to know that uh, the students in those madrasas there in Karachi, not even one single person of the students in those madrasas are from Karachi. They are all from northern part of Pakistan, northern areas of Pakistan and different part of Pakistan, but they come all the way from different part of Pakistan and stay there and, 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 and study in those madrasa. Not even one single person, uh, a student are from uh, the Karachi, are the real uh, people who live there in Karachi. Now what we are doing, we have just, we did not abandon them. We tried to create, uh, you know, the bridge between the administration and on, on those madrasas and I have tried to get the footages in, in, in my documentary as well. I, have, I, was, I myself and my team have gone personally to those madrasas, inside on those madrasas and provided them computers wherever we could provide the computers, giving, trying to uh, bring, bring them you know, uh, on board with us and trying to, we just tried to uh, uh, open their door. I mean, just did not uh, let them alone that whatever they are doing, you know, I mean, they would be allowed to do. We try to bring them in our nexus and we are we have established a very good contact with, with those people. 
and therefore you see there in Karachi as compared to other parts of Pakistan uh, that uh, there are less areas where which, which are the no-go areas like you know nobody is aware that what's happening inside almost each and every madrasa there in Karachi at these administrations and civic administration and law enforcement agencies they know, they understand that what's happening there in those Madrasa. This is how we have tried, but it is a big reforms are required. Uh, we have to give them, a, it's a federal government's job to provide some uh, sort of uh, 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 room for them to come into a real uh, world where uh, those degree holders they are from their Madrasa or the course should be established and, and, and new subjects were, were should be established where uh, if they are passed out from those Madrasa, they could be uh, having a better life there in, in Practical, uh, just and then just picking up on this idea of law enforcement as well. I mean, obviously it's no small challenge in a city like Karachi to deal with it. And I was interested in something you said in your comments about how if you want to destabilize Pakistan, you destabilize Karachi. And there's no doubt that there's been a long history of destabilizing Karachi. But having said that, I mean, it is it is interesting to note that in recent months at least there have been attacks in Lahore, there have been attacks in Peshawar, there have been attacks in Islamabad. But there haven't been attacks of that same skill in Karachi. You, know, you pointed to that, some of that might just be very good police work on the ground that you know, a number of these plots have been disrupted in advance. So just take a step back then, one, what, how do you see this issue? I mean, people talk about the Taliban using Karachi as a place to raise money through kidnappings, through ransom. So how do you see that issue within your city? And then on top of that, how do you think, Karachi, why do you think Karachi has been more effective say, than the other cities? What I, feel, uh, what I believe that uh, the kind of awareness uh, uh, you'll find there in Karachi in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in common citizen uh, there, uh, that is not available in different parts of Pakistan, unfortunately. Uh, we have been alert for the last one and a half year and uh, the political uh, parties there in, in Karachi and uh, the administration uh, work together and we have been uh, uh, alarming people uh, from the uh, by, by those activities, you know, and we were there in different part of, of Karachi. Therefore, with the human intelligence, our law enforcement agencies and and and, and uh, the law enforcement agencies and army and, and army intelligence, uh, they have done uh, a very uh, commendable job there in Karachi. I think more than 20 to 25 real gangs were busted uh, there in Karachi, and lots of suicide materials and explosives were were, were, were captured. And in, like I've mentioned, just in six weeks' time, more than eight to ten uh, big groups uh, were, were captured from uh, Karachi, uh, and that's how uh, all these attacks were pre prevented before they, they could launch anything. Uh, I think the human intelligence is there, the awareness in the hearts and minds of the people of Karachi is there, and people are alert, people uh, do uh, care about their neighborhoods, they do care about the uh, they are alert about their uh, their their own uh, real uh, uh, small neighborhoods, and that's how with the human intelligence, law enforcement agencies agencies could make all these differences. Yeah. Sure. I mean, so the the other dimension of violence in Karachi, so to speak, which I imagine is very difficult as a mayor to deal with, is not just sort of these uh, this issue of quote unquote terrorism, but there's also the issue of political violence. There's been a history of this, and, and most notably in 2007, as you know, uh, during that point when the Chief Justice of Tukal Chaudhry went, there was a huge protest that broke out, about 40 some people died. Can you just talk about this phenomenon of political violence? I mean, at the time, as you know, many people were pointing to your party as having, been, having had a role in that. If you could comment on that, if you could comment on this idea of this culture of political violence in Karachi itself and how you sought to address that. Well, uh, anything happens uh, back there in Karachi, we are the biggest victim. Let me just uh, uh, tell you this, because uh, in Karachi we enjoy 85% of the uh, voting pattern uh, out of a 19 National Assembly seats there in Karachi. Uh, we, uh, M as, uh, as you know, I've gone to a party called MKM. Uh, MKM has won 17 seats uh, out of 19, and that has been the uh, phenomenon for the last 25 years. Uh, we have been in the electoral politics, and since then we never lost even a single person of uh, Vote uh, there in Karachi, even in bad times where there was an army operation going on on us. Uh, whatever happens bad there in Karachi, we are the big, biggest victim. Uh, particular, uh, you know, specific to that uh, day, uh, definitely people were killed, uh, 52 people were killed uh, from both sides uh, in, in, in Karachi. 
definitely there was uh, uh, nobody so far uh, investigation is going on judiciary is is taking all the uh, the the uh, investigation but uh, i can tell you uh, where you have millions of people on on road uh, from both sides at uh, at one uh, time uh, it would be entirely difficult and impossible uh, to judge that who is doing what karachi is the hub of each and everybody from pakistan in uh, you 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 even in the uh, 150 25000 afghanis are living there in karachi uh, burmese are there in karachi people from all caste creed religion from everywhere in pakistan are there in karachi uh, it's a real cosmopolitan uh, city but you cannot fix that uh, blame to anybody uh, we we are the biggest stakeholder there in karachi and uh, we definitely have reached out to the, even after and before that we have reached out to the political parties there in karachi each on to each and every party's doorstep i myself my governor of sen and and and, and the high ups of my party and that's how we brought that whole city for last two years uh, after all that bad incident you would not see anything is happening in karachi among any other party we have brought everybody uh, on board and we have gone to everybody's uh, houses and doorstep and together we are just trying to work for the peace of karachi and uh, that is all it in control as well just and on the on the note of the npm and politics you know it would be the npm obviously your leader of the opposition has spoken of this that the npm is what is a party that is not based on you know landlord culture it's not based on this and this has been a big point of his um, how do you see your party within sort of the broader political framework of pakistan if that's true then in your opinion why has the party not been able to get a broader national following in a sense and what what do you see sort of as what is your party's vision for itself going down the road well we have been the victim of our bad perception uh, uh, there in pakistan for last uh, uh, 25 years uh, 24 25 years uh, we have uh, and the reason is that that we have we are the only party which has challenged the status quo of pakistan uh, the system of pakistan and the system of pakistan the domain, domestic politics of pakistan is that uh, uh, 35 to 40 families there in pakistan who have been ruling pakistan for last two years and uh, they have been the mnas and mpas and ministers and uh, chief ministers and, and federal minister and president for last seven generations but if you go to their constituencies, if you visit their constituencies, you will not find in a single primary school in their constituencies where they have been elected for, for their forefathers' time. But you will see uh, that they would say, send their own kids to London and America for the studies. And when father gets old in politics, son comes and take over the responsibility. This is what has been happening for last 62 years. It's like a, politics is like a musical chair for them, you know. One goes and other comes. This is how uh, the politics of Pakistan, Pakistan is. I, w uh, I, I would hate to give you uh, to call the name, but uh, let me just uh, uh, mention that since uh, I'm talking about uh, the system of Pakistan, uh, when Nawaz Sharif uh, became the prime minister and he got an opportunity to select the chief minister for his uh, for Punjab, uh, the biggest city, province of Pakistan, he did not find anybody else but his own brother. And not once, twice, thrice he got an opportunity to select the chief minister for Punjab, and thrice he has selected his own brother, which is Shahbaz Sharif. We'll give, give you another example. Uh, there was a, there was a, in 19, in in, in uh, 2003, uh, there was a, a government of uh, MMA. Uh, all these religious parties got together, and in 2002 the election they got they formed the government in NWFP which is the North West Province of Pakistan. In 2003, there was uh, uh, an election, there was a by-election on, on more than 40 to 45 seats there in, 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 in NWFP. All these religious parties got together and came up together with a slogan that we must not allow women in NWFP to come and cast vote because in Sharia, in Islam, this is not allowed. So they got a treaty the sign an agreement all those parties which were uh, fighting election there in NWFP and they did not allow a single woman to come woman to come out on the street to cast vote in 2003 election by election but the same Qadi Hussain and Masab when he got an opportunity to select a woman for the national assembly the special women seat 
he did not find anybody else but his own daughter. He did not allow, he did not allow a woman to come out on the street to cast vote, but he did allow his own daughter to send to the National Assembly among all those, uh, uh, you know, among full of the men there. So this is what the hypocrite custom of Pakistan is. Can I just, uh, uh, let me just, just one minute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be helpful for the audience. I, mean, yeah. that, I think that's a, that's a strong critique. But no, no, uh, let me just, let, let me just sure. give you my example. Sure. Who, who am I and what we are. Sure. Uh, we, uh, we have got 25, let me just give an example of today's uh, circumstances. We have got 25 MNAs, member of National Assemblies from my party. We have 52 members of provincial, provincial assembly from my party. Uh, the governor of my province is from Amkin, the mayor of Karachi is from Amkin, the mayor of Hyderabad is from Amkin. We have got seven senators, we have we are we are eleven provincial ministers and two federal ministers. We have got more than 100 and 125, 125 seats and we have been there for the last 25 years. Not even one single person is the brother or relative of my leader, Mr. Tahuza. He has got his own brother, they are living there in that city. Instead of Mustafa Kamal being a Nazim of being a mayor of that Karachi, his brother, as the custom demands of Karachi, would have been the he would have been his brother. With a, instead of uh, Ishratul Ibad as a, as a, as a, as a uh, governor of Sindh, his second brother would have been the governor. But we, in 25 years of this whole political history, we could not see even a single relative from from his uh, from his family or his brother. Number one. In order to win that any seat there in Pakistan, you have to be the feudal or industrialist son. Without spending money, one cannot become the member of National Assembly or member of Provincial Assembly or the mayor of, of, of any city. I'm sitting in front of you right now. Here in 2002, I was selected and elected uh, uh, by MKM uh, for to become the member of Provincial, Provincial Assembly. In 2002, they had uh, given me the uh, Information Technology Ministry. In 2005, they asked me to go and participate in the election for the mayor. Till today, I could not and I did not spend a single penny, trust me, to get this post. I have spent my four years in my, in my, in my mayorship. I did not spend a single penny, neither I'm the relative of my, my Mr. Thousand or any, any, any close by. This is, the, this is the, the challenge to the status quo, so-called status quo of Pakistan's politics. If we were to be the normal landlord and feudals of Pakistan, trust me, nobody could have gone against us, would have just followed the system of Pakistan, but we did not follow the system of Pakistan, therefore there was an army operation launched on us in, on nine, in 1992, and 10 years there was an army operation, they used to call us the uh, enemy of the state, the destabilizing force, the raw agent when we were the Indian spy, they used to call us, after having these many voting patterns, sorry, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go on, you know, I'm sure you have a feeling that this question may come up again, but again, we appreciate your perspective yeah. on that. Um, and just in the interest of time. Just to close, just to one, one thing. <laughs> today, today as, as an MPM, we have gone to all over the Pakistan, and in today, just uh, 12, 12 hours back, we had a huge public rally there in Iskartu. Today and 20, 25,000. You can watch on the, on the internet. 25,000 people from Iskartu and Gilgit had attended uh, that rally of Mr. Tawus. And now we have 42 National Assembly members there in Kashmir Assembly as well. So we, have, we we are the National Party now. Switching gears. This is my last question before we open it up to an audience that's been expecting. <coughs> You're here in the United States. You spent some time in DC talking with people over there. As you know, a very significant bill was recently signed by President Obama, the Kerry Hilton Bill. <coughs> it triples non-military aid to Pakistan. Obviously, this isn't the first time Pakistan has given aid, I mean, the U.S. has given aid to Pakistan, and there are these issues on both sides. On this side, the issue is, how is the money being used? Is it being wasted? Is it being kind of eaten up along the way, either on the ground or by contractors? In Pakistan, the issue is, we're not seeing this money. Where is this money that the U.S. keeps on talking about going? From your perspective, if you're sitting down in a room with, with, with U.S. policymakers as you have been, what would your advice be to them about two things regarding this bill? One is where to spend it, and two is how to spend it, what mechanism? If I want to be the decision maker of Pakistan, let me just tell you that, personally speaking, I don't believe in charity and AIDS. Nobody gives charity to anybody, and nobody, uh, nobody aid, gives aid to anybody. 
it has to be a mutual benefit for both the parties. And I believe that uh, don't give us aid, give us prey. Don't uh, give us fish, teach us how to catch fish. And in today's world, I don't know uh, if, if, uh, if I would be again the decision maker of Pakistan, I would have come to the United States with one, one point agenda that if you are different of Pakistan, then why aren't you giving us the market access to my products? Why Cambodia, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, they have been given the duty-free access to their product. We have been the victim of all these war and terror. We have been the victim, we are the first line state in, 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 of the United States of America and NATO forces. Uh, NATO forces. Why have not just we are we have been given the uh, the market access to our to our to our project to our to our product there in there in in your state? This is this is what I would have said. But coming to this question of yours that this aid how this aid should go and and talking about the people in, in that part of the, of the world when. Uh, I come here and I speak to the people uh, in this part of the world. The people uh, uh, tell me that, say, we have been helping Pakistan for the last so many decades with billions of dollars. But still, your countrymen say bad thing about us and you are not very comfortable and you people are not very contented. When I go to that part of the world, in my country, when I speak to the people about the American health and support, they don't know anything about American support, but just they, they, they know the drone attacks. They just know, know the, uh, if, if anything is coming from, uh, from the United States of America, that is drone coming in. Well, I'm telling you, that's not true. Americans have been helping Pakistan for the last so many decades. Billions of dollars have gone to Pakistan. But that has not changed the life of the common man who's walking on the street. The trickle down effect has never taken place because those money, those billions of dollars have gone to the pockets of few dozens of elites, ruling elites there in Pakistan. Few dozens of people there in Pakistan. So therefore, therefore, today, we salute the and respect if somebody is if if, if any any country is supporting Pakistan. But not in that manner, first of all. But after all, if money is coming, it should not come as a direct money giving to the any uh, administration. No, it should have been, should be on project specific. And those project specific should be, you don't give money to anybody. Even if you are conceiving, asking, for instance, if you ask me as a mayor of Karachi, uh, uh, as a district nazim of Karachi, or they are district nazim in, 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 in mayors of in everywhere in Papa, every part of Pakistan. The district's mayors are the one who understands the local problem, the problem of the people. If you, for, for instance, if you were to ask me what is the real problem of my, of my uh, two, first two problems of my city, what I want to resolve, I would tell you that, okay, I want to have the desalination plant right in place, I want to have the mass transit system right in place. And if somebody comes and, 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 and do that mass transit system and desalination plant for me, I would go to the people of Karachi and would tell them that look, your problem has been resolved just because of my advocacy and I have brought these Americans money and convinced Americans to come and do your job. In order to get my, my popularity, in order to market myself, my deal, I would be marketing the Americans aid as well. And there wouldn't be any money involved in that. I would be least bothered where and which company is coming to do that job. At the end of the day, I would need to have the desalinated water giving, uh, being given to my, uh, to my people uh, uh, to drink. So far, nothing has happened, not even a single person of work has happened with this billions of dollars of, hundreds of billions of dollars which have gone to, uh, to the people, on the name of the people of Pakistan. I'm not talking about the, our, uh, the military uh, uh, fund. Uh, that's beside the point. I'm talking about the fund which has gone on the social sector. Nothing has changed there in, in, in Pakistan. So it's a big debate. I mean, uh, first of all, if somebody were to offer me the house, I would not take the house. I would say, okay, give me the level playing field the way you have given to other part, other 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 countries. Uh, and we, I mean, people, uh, the United States claims to be the partner with us, the friends of Pakistan. What kind of friends are we? Which uh, 
who does not even get the uh, you know the market access and, 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 and tax free uh, stuff uh, from Pakistan to America. Whereas Bangladesh and Cambodia and Sri Lanka and India has got the access to uh, from that sort of thing. So this is what, this would be my, my comment on that. That's, that's a very powerful criticism of your response. Well. Thank you for sharing that. Let's move to the audience and very quickly ground rules for the audience. You need to introduce yourself, obviously. You need to keep your question to a question. And what we'll do is we'll just start to try to sweep through this quickly. We'll, we'll get everyone. So, please, your question. Uh, my name is Yusuf Marvi. Uh, I work here in Boston, uh, from Karachi also. Uh, I recently read, I mean, I, you know, I see your own Karachi uh, logo, uh, slogan, and stuff like that. But I recently came across an interview. I don't know how true it is, but. Somebody asked you if you would rerun for the mayorship of Karachi, and you swore that you would never even think about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. you're talking about building the future of Karachi. If you know, if we, I were to take your word and say you have done good things for Karachi, but you know, if for some reasons, for governance, whatever reasons, you don't see yourself ever doing it for God for second reason, then who will do it, and what are the underlying reasons uh, behind it? Well, first of all, these responsibilities are not the bed of roses, trust me. Uh, uh, and uh, in order, in order to, do, uh, to do something responsibly, uh, with, with the responsibility, you know, uh, it's a nightmare. And uh, uh, nobody loves the responsibility. At least I don't. Uh, uh, this, is not the, this is not the luxury for me. But why I, I say it, none of the development should be on you, uh, on the person center. It, the system must run. The system should run. And would we have developed if I were to be the bad administrator, if I would just create everything which is revolving and surrounded with my personality? No, that should not be the case. I can get killed tomorrow, you know, come, somebody can come and blow me up. So, so what will happen? The, the, the progress of Karachi should stop and would die? That should not be the case. So we have created the custom and system, and, and the organization setup is there, and we have to see new people coming into the power, coming into the system, and doing their job. So that's why, I mean, if, 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 if somebody thinks that, uh, uh, nobody knew Mustafa Kaman four years back. Uh, nobody recommended me. Uh, be the mayor of the city. If I can do this thing, the system is there, my party is there, my party has brought it up, you know. My party, my leader has chosen me up. So my party has got millions of Mustafa Kamal, uh, you know, with them. And if I'll go, like, nobody knew me four years back, there will be a person who would be there who wouldn't know, known by anybody, but you would do a better job than Mustafa Kamal. This is what, this is how I take it. Minimize that corruption. 
uh, uh, this is what uh, I mean. Uh, um, I would say, but in, as far as police is concerned, I have no control on them. But it, they, I mean, uh, we are fighting for it uh, from the provincial government and fight for government that police should come under the mayor. Police should report under the mayor because police policing cannot be done without the committee support. And the, the first contact of the committee, we have the contact with the committee there uh, on, on the ground. So therefore, we uh, we are urging uh, the provincial government and the federal government to hand over and ask police to be responsible towards the local government, towards the mayor. And if they'll come to us, uh, definitely there's a ways to, uh, technology should be used the way we are using this technology, their garage, command and control room and everything. And their salaries need to be uh, increased. Uh, we have to, uh, to you know, give them take care of their uh, problems as well. And on top of that, the strict laws, strict uh, you know, uh, management. I think that's how you can minimize this. Why don't you go ahead and then Matthew, we're going to stay together. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Japan, and I'm not studying about the industry. Uh, I used to do a uh, development job in Pakistan, I'm a Christian for four years. Uh, the difficulty I felt in executing job in Karachi is the relationship between CPCK and WC. <laughs> My question is, what is your strategy to make the relationship between them? better so that the development project can be executed more smoothly? Well, there's no conflict uh, between uh, as such uh, in, uh, on, on, on real uh, working relationship. Uh, there's, there's a dichotomy of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, way of doing things there in, in administ administration. It's, it's very difficult to understand the people of this part of the world that uh, the biggest impediment in my work, which I face for my own people, and uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, you know I will not go into the detail, but let me just tell you that today we don't need enemies. We ourselves are more than enough to be our own enemies. We we don't need enemies from out of Pakistan. What I have seen, you know, in four years of working there in Pakistan, we are the biggest enemies of, of ourselves. So uh, it's it's crap. That look, people say wrong things that you know. That that uh, that uh, America, this Israel, and, and the India, and this country and that country, they are against you and against the politicians. Normally talk about nobody is against us. We ourselves are the biggest enemies. So uh, you can get your answer from that. You know, I, uh, I think uh, I, ca I cannot go further that more, more than that. Moderate, they are people you know, uh, who don't uh, 
agree with this, uh, uh, even from the Pashtun community, with this phenomena, uh, what's happening there. But definitely one person of, uh, uh, among them, they are people who are providing them support and help and covering them as well. Because these people from all over to that area, they cannot come and mingle around in other areas of Karachi. They have to find the area where they cannot be, uh, you know, identified differently. So they live in the, uh, in the Pashtun community. And all these arrests had been taken place from their uh, community. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule to stop that. Uh, all we had, we had been doing and all, and I must, uh, you know, uh, mention here, and that the law enforcement agencies and the intelligence job has been phenomenal and, 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 and commendable because uh, uh, they could nowhere in Pakistan any of the uh, um, city could prevent so many attacks and, and uh, prevented so many people the way they have captured people from Karachi. So all we can do is just to have the human intelligence. And, and, and law enforcement, the enforcement agencies alert. That's how we can stop that. Otherwise, you cannot, and one cannot stop people coming from any uh, where in Pakistan uh, to Karachi. Definitely, it's one country, and everybody is allowed and free to go anywhere they want to go. Yeah, Dr. Shimshay, and leave the That's not my pocket money. 
that doesn't come from my family's money, uh, um, a bank account. That is your money which I have spent on your project. So these are the passes, flowers, and, 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 and bridges, and road infrastructure, and implantation, and parks. It all belongs to you. So be the owner of your, of your city. And you would be surprised to know that in one day, men, women, children, 28,000 people came and enlisted themselves, you know, to be the protector of the city, to own the, uh, from each and every corner of Karagi. So now we have got the army of people to take care of their own infrastructure. If somebody, and people are aware that what has happened, if somebody tomorrow comes in to my place and wants to just overlook all these issues and take a U-turn from there, people will not let me do that because now people are aware and the owner of Karaki. I think this is the only safety wall I can I could build. And I think we have built the safety wall in order to have their, the, the upcoming men's popularity, you know, for their, own, for their own sake, for his own survival, he or she must not stop these what would have been done today. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Murtaza. I'm a student at Brandeis University, but a resident of Karachi. <coughs> my question to you is, um, how do you think uh, that the Sindh government's push to replace your local body governments, your local government, how do you think this push will affect the position of the Nazim and the, the, the system that you have set up? Because we know that everything will drastically change once this uh, has, been, uh, has been replaced. So how would you think that Karachi would respond to that? Well, not Karachi, but the whole Pakistan has responded in a very uh, uh, hostile manner and we did not accept this, uh, this, this uh, thought of the federal and provincial government to uh, um, abolish the system. Uh, the system has revealed miracles, in, not in Karachi, but in all over the Pakistan. And we, when we talk and we put um, ethically, legally and constitutionally, it's all illegal what the provincial government and federal government is asking. But uh, uh, from the uh, uh, world's point of view, uh, wherever you see the uh, uh, oldest democracy in the world, the local government system, the local governance is the essential issue, uh, 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 you know, part of every democracy anywhere in the world, even the centuries uh, old democracy, you will see, go and see that the local governments have been empowered, you know, the, the government to the grassroots level. If we want to have a better uh, uh, democracy there in Pakistan, we must have the local government system in place there in Pakistan. Without that, one cannot claim that we have gone reached the grassroots level and resolve the issues of, of, of the people uh, of a common citizen. Uh, what I believe that in the uh, presence of very strong media there in Pakistan, uh, I think uh, um, it's a, it would be a wishful thinking uh, of uh, uh, you know the provincial government and federal government to abolish and uh, take the U-turn from the system. I think it has got its grass, it, its roots on grass and in mind and hearts of the people of Pakistan. That it would be nearly impossible if they were to be able to do that, they would have done it by now. And they they cannot do that. I think. Uh, my name is Sandra Wells. I would be interested in hearing you as a person of authority on the events that have developed in the last year in Pakistan, especially also in NWUFP and FATAS, as you have been as affected also as the mayor of Karachi. Well, are you talking about the, uh, war, the war which is going on there yes. in Sabah and Wazirstan and all? Yes. Well, uh, Yes, uh, uh, there is a real war going on uh, in that part of Pakistan, Wazirstan and Sabah. 2,600 army personnel, officers and soldiers have been killed and there in that part of, uh, uh, of Pakistan in the last uh, two, two to three years. Whereas the total uh, casualty of uh, the US Army here in Afghanistan is 1,500. Uh, whereas our soldiers and officers have been killed in the uh, in 2,600 people have been killed, uh, soldiers have been killed. The people of Pakistan through the suicide bombing and the repercussions of that, that goes in thousands. Uh, we are committed to eliminate uh, terrorism, uh, definitely yes, uh, it's a French, there's a French minority uh, of the people uh, where, you know, foreigners are also involved, uh, they are having the, these uh, uh, act activities and, and, and events uh, carried out. 
But let me just tell you one thing uh, in this that regard that we also understand, and at least my party and my my leader and, and, and the worker and I, I personally understand that uh, fighting war and terror alone with the hard forces, with the army, will not give us the result. Will not resolve the issue. Uh, in, in not, not, uh, neither in, in Afghanistan nor in Pakistan. War on terror and with these evil forces, this war can, can only be fought, uh, can only be fought with, the, with the good governance there in Afghanistan and, and in Pakistan both. Because the bad governance both there in Pakistan and Afghanistan is, is breeding more and more fuel and more and more militants and, and extremism towards that these all all evil evil work. So government has to reach out to the people, to those people who are living there as a common citizen, as a common Pakistanian, as a common Afghanis, Afghanis, uh, with their social uh, you know, development, the education and basic necessities of life and, 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 and their jobs creation. Then only we, we would be able to fight this war. But alone, if somebody thinks that we can, uh, Pakistan in Pakistan or Afghanistan, the NATO forces or Pakistani forces can fight this war just through the uh, drone attacks and through the armed forces and through the latest technology with machine guns and all, that's not possible. Uh, but what I feel that's not possible. That will not bring the result. These forces, these hard forces, could create some vacuum for the government to reach out to those areas and develop those areas and create more and more facilities for the common citizen of both the country. Uh, but alone, uh, the, the, it's uh, just just with the with the hard forces you cannot fight them and fight and win this war. That man and that feudal has not been tarnished. Who comes, who bury five women alive, and and come onto the TV and tell the world that look, you don't have to worry about it. This is our custom. And after two months, that senator had been taken in the federal government, the current federal government. Reputation of uh, those families, those feudals, had never been questioned who killed girls and women alive on the name of uh, honor and this called an honor killing. The people of uh, those families' reputation never been questioned 
who, who married five years old girl with a 60 years old man just to resolve their family disputes. Reputation of the people have, uh, and, and, and the parties and, 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 and families have never been questioned who have looted the whole country's money and nation's money and made their own bank balance in different parts of Pakistan but again and again they are coming back and their, their sons and their, folk, uh, their, their grandsons are becoming the, uh, the owners of Pakistan. Yes, the reputation of MGM has been damaged and, and yes, we, uh, we are the victim of our bad reputation. But trust me, Karachi is the city which asks questions and Karachi is the most literate city in Pakistan, 90% literacy rate, 85 to 90 percent literacy rate, it's not any feudal village or something like that. If MKM is have, have, have been able to survive for last 25 years in electoral politics, and you were well aware, when there was an army operation going on in 1993 to 1996, there was election even in that time as well, when each, each and every seat there was a real Pakistan army was there, and all of our leaders were in hiding and had gone away. Even that time, the people of Karachi did not leave Amkim. So if Amkim were to do something, we, we are not claiming that we are angels. No, 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 that's not the case. We are human beings and we come from the same society. And if we question and we talk about Amkim, we must not overlook this whole society. In our society today, we have got killers, we have got kidnappers, we have got people who are looting money. We have good people who are lying, giving bribes and bad people as well. All these parties are the bunch of the same society, people from the same segments have, have, have come to the, the system. So we are not the bunch of angels. We have made, we, we must have made mistakes in past. We must be making mistakes today and we would be making mistakes tomorrow as well. But as a party, as an intention, let me just give an example. We are the only party in Pakistan who have set out our own elected National Assembly members, not one, two, but three National Assembly members, and we call for the by-election. I am the Nazim, the town mayors of my, my party, who were elected with me four years back. Out of 14 town Nazims, six town Nazims have been replaced in four years' time. They did not... Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, leave the party or did something wrong with the party. But all they did, they were not coming up to the expectation, and they were involved in in malpracticing and other illegal issues. That's why MKM took only one second to make a decision to sack them out, and they have thrown uh, back. And six out of fourteen people are not the same today in the system of Pakistan. You would you, 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 you agree with me that not no none of the party have ever sacked even a single councillor of their elected councillor uh, uh, in, in, in anywhere in Pakistan. We haven't heard and ever. And just imagine that uh, can we say safely that in all the parties that every local there is no bad man in any party in, in, in the politics of Pakistan. Nobody has sacked, sacked even a single single person in Pakistan. So, yes, we are the human being. We must have made mistakes. We are making mistakes today. We would be making a mistake and we will be making mistakes tomorrow as well. But as a whole philosophy of Mr. Rathav Hussain and MKM, no, we don't tolerate any bad deeds in our part. Last question. I have been raising my hand consistently. Thank you. And I was here first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and everybody else who will listen because I think you're here, welcome to my city, is the Carr Institute Human Rights. And I'm so happy that you have changed your tone and rhetoric about the question. Because what I'm referring to is the NPR interview, June 2008. And I think you maybe were not aware of what NPR is or you were misguided and emotional. And now I see a much wiser, kinder understanding here. So I'm happy that you have changed your opinion, or at least your rhetoric. I am also a citizen of Karachi. I was born there, and I'm also a citizen and domicile from northern areas. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but could you just make yes, a question? Yes, and my question is number one. Thank you for acknowledging 99.59% Pashtun community. 
your other person, Amir Yafet Khan, how you explain him, and also what were you doing meeting with Congressman Tierney and Negro Ponti as in your video? First of all, uh, <coughs> my uh, views have not changed. I was the way I was uh, uh, a couple of years back, the same way I'm today. Uh, what you hear in NPR, you have, you have mentioned. If I want to tell you uh, that, uh, for instance, let me just quote you one, uh, one, one, uh, one uh, uh, quote from uh, Quran that it says that uh, Urdu, man, if, if, I, if I would mention uh, that. Uh, or tum masjidun ka rukh mat karo, right? Don't take your uh, yourself towards the mosque. Full stop. If you full stop here, that means you say you turn around and say that look, Quran is asking you not to go to the mosque. But if you read the next sentence, that Quran is saying, or jab tum nashe ki halat mein ho, right? So what you hear on NPR, I. I have but but girls to tell everything explicitly in front of everybody and anywhere and, and uh, any any with in front of uh, anyone. We were talking about the encroachments, and we were talking about the encroachment issue issue, and under the garb of those encroachments, how colonization was taking place. Then you build one mosque on encroachment land. You build the madrasa, and the neighborhood start coming in, and that's it. That that area becomes the, the no-go area. And in that same NPR interview, he had gone to take the the voiceover of those people who were even encroaching that land. And there's a voiceover available there as well that complements my thought. And even the IG's interview was also there. So that is the explanation of NPR. Pakistanis uh, uh, have been benefited in my city, Alamgarha, and. Uh, in four years' time, not even once, 90 percent of the contractor of my, my in my city, where I have spent 300 billion rupees for my own hand, it has gone to the pockets of Pakhtun, and I'm proud of it. And we have never discriminated, discriminated with anybody. If I wanted, I could have done that. But that's not my preaching. That's not the preaching of my leader and my party. So I did not do that. Number two, what I was doing with Negro Ponte and, and I was not uh, selling Pakistan in their head. I was uh, I was marketing Pakistan. I was I was preaching the good things about Pakistan. I was preaching the telling the world the success model of Pakistan. That whatever success, good governance has been done there in Karachi. That was that was being preached. And every Pakistani should be proud of it that we uh, if somebody is coming to, to see uh, there in Karachi and to uh, acknowledge Karachi. That's the pride for the whole Pakistan and all Pakistanis. Thank you.